So it's Cedar Direct product listing. So to give you guys an overview, I'll just be talking about who needs to list, when that needs to happen, what needs to be included. I'll do a live demo for you guys so you can see it happening live. Um, then I'll talk about um, how to update your listings and how to delist and give you some helpful hints and common errors and then just a quick summary at the end. So product listing, who has to do it? So if you need to, if you're required to register, you are required to list also. There's very few exceptions to that. So if you're registered, you have to list your product. Um, if you are under common ownership and control, one single listing is sufficient. So even if you're making your drugs in different establishments, different sites, one uh, listing is okay if you're under common ownership and control. Otherwise, if you're contracting out things here and there, each of those places will need to list. So with regards to a contract manufacturer, um, again, a private label distributor is does not participate in any manufacturing function. So if you want to think about CVS or Walgreens or Rite Aid, they have drugs, their ibuprofen that will have their names on it, but they didn't participate in manufacturing those. So the contract manufacturer who makes that drug for them, they will have to list under their labeler code, and then they also have to list under the labeler code of the PLD. So a PLD may elect to list their own, um, their own products if they want, but they're doing so as an authorized agent for the contract manufacturer. So when does it need to happen? Initially, it must be submitted within three days of the initial registration. And any updates um, have to be done every June and December. So if you something changed with your drug product today, um, you have until December, the end of December, to get it updated. Um, but we do encourage you to make updates as soon as possible. With regards to annual listing certification, I just want to let you know that an update to your SPL certifies your listing for the next calendar year. So if you uh, make an update to your SPL, you don't need to recertify it using the blanket no change that Don will talk about later. Uh, it will certify it for the next calendar year. So any updates this calendar year, even if you made it in January, certifies your listing until December 31st, 2019. So uh, what you need to include, I'm just going to highlight a few things. When I do the live demo, it goes step by step of what you need to include. So I'm just highlighting a few things here that uh, where we see common errors. So uh, one of the more common ones is proprietary and non-proprietary names. So if your drug product does not have a brand name, then you put the generic name for both fields. Also, the um, active ingredients and active moiety causes some confusion. And when I get to that part in the live demo, I'll uh, kind of explain a little bit more about that. So the inactive ingredients are required now per our new regulation that was published in um, 2016. So you need to include that in there. And the DEA schedule, you only add that if it has a DEA schedule. So um, Otherwise, you leave it blank. Re with regard to the concept of labeling, this is where you would uh, input your package insert. And you're also um, supposed to put in your uh, a JPEG file of the carton image. So a lot of, not a, I wouldn't say a lot, but it does happen where the wrong image gets uploaded, and then that causes an error and, and the deficiency within the letter. I mean, within the listing. Uh, also, with regard to the marketing category, this is the authority for which you market drugs in the United States. So if you've submitted an application and it's been approved, then you would put the application number in there. If you're marketing an OTC product and you're following the monograph, then you would put the monograph citation in there. Otherwise, it's an unapproved drug product. So um, also, just having the name and establishment of where the drugs got manufactured. So all of it is listed. So if, um, if it was made, the API is made in China, and then it's um, 
you know, then it gets processed in India, then it gets uh, finished in the United States. All of those establishments have to be uh, noted on your listings. So, okay, here's it's time for the live demo. Um, I'm a pharmacist. I can stand all day, but I'll just sit down so I don't not talking down to you guys. So um, this is the area where you have uh, the submissions. And again, if you don't see product listing or certification, you go into um, edit user profile and give yourself, give yourself access to whichever uh, product listing category you want to use. So click on product listing and certification and create new upload file. So Again, as they mentioned in the um, registration, if you don't have a file, you don't need to start over. You can email us and ask us for that file, and you can import that zip file right on there. Um, or you can create from scratch, which is what we'll do today as a live demo. Um, so here, we'll do an example of a prescription drug label and hit continue. This will generate a, a product listing SPL file for you. And um, you just follow, just follow the form, and each of them have sections. So the header section is, uh, describes it. It's a human prescription drug label, SPL. The set ID, again, this is the um, ID that links this listing. So this has to remain the same throughout the life of the listing. This root ID is specific to this version. So this is version number one. And this changes as you update the versions. So these are uh, everything with the stars required. So this is uh, updated for you. And a title is what you would put for your um, Cedar Direct. So um, we'll do a wonder drug liquid. And that's just so you have that information. So if you save this as a draft, you see that that title is on there. So let's go back in. And this, the next section, so you've, you're finished with the headers, you go into the labeler details. So this is where you would put whoever the drug is being marketed by. So this is Wonder Pharma. And you put your labeler done in there. And that's that. So the registrant detail is if you're a contract manufacturer and you are registering on behalf of a PLD, you would put that in there. Otherwise, you can leave it blank. The um, establishment, you go in and add the various establishments that we talked about. So um, let's say you got um, the API from a company in China. So put China Pharma in there, put their DUNS number, and then you uh, pick the APR manufacturer. Then you put the product NDC that you're going to assign this. That, that links the NDC with this manufacturer. And if you, for some reason, you want to keep this information confidential, business relationships, you can mark it confidential. Save that establishment. And now the China Pharma is uh, within your establishment. So now you go ahead and add every establishment that was um, associated with this listing. So say you then do the manufacturing in this, at this site right here that's associated with this address and this DUNS number. And then you link it to that NDC, save that establishment. And then say you do the packing and labeling at a different site, you add that on there as well. So Baltimore or something. Then you add the pack, that NDC, packing it there. Then you add. Too. 
save that as an average. <clears throat> so again, you list all the establishments associated with this drug product, and once you're done with there, you're ready to move on to the product details section. So here you would click on add product, and you just go like the other ones, follow it each heading one by one. So the NDC product code we already decided was going to be that NDC number. And our drug is Wonder, Wonder Drug, liquid. Suffix if you have it, like extended release or whatnot. Um, so the non-proprietary name is a generic name, so let's just say it's naproxen. And again, the DEA schedule, since naproxen doesn't have a DEA schedule, you just leave it as is. Um, you don't have to choose any one of this unless it is controlled. So you leave it as is if it's not scheduled. So the dosage form, you pick um, what it is. So it's a liquid. And then the route of administration, you choose from the drop down or from the list right here and say what it is. So it's an oral. Choose that and then bring it to the other side. If there's any other um, indicated uses for it, you can add that in there. So uh, if Wonder Drug was um, like uh, indicated for boofing, you could add rental in there, rectal in there, or you could take it out, for instance. Source NDC is used for um, if, you, if, if, if you're repackaging a drug or if you're uh, doing compounding. Otherwise, you leave that blank as well. The uh, marketing details, active means that you are actively going to start marketing this, so it's uh, active to start it. Completed is if you're delisting. Start marketing date, say you're going to start it next week, just pick a date. And then the marketing category, what did, what's your authority for marketing this drug in the United States? So say you have submitted a new drug application and that's that. And then you input the um, citation in there. So it's an NDA, and then you do the whatever the application number that was approved through the uh, FDA. Now the next section is the ingredients. You add the the different drugs that are associated with it, uh, the ingredients that are associated with it. So this part may be a little bit confusing because usually denominator is at the bottom, but it's the first field here. So the strength is the numerator, and this denominator is, uh, is, is the first field. So if let's say this is a 2,000 milligram per 5 ml liquid. So we would put 5 here as the denominator strength, and then we would put ml here. Um, if it's a tablet, as you saw uh, Troy do it, it's 1, 1. It's just each, one tablet, one tablet. So uh, the type. And this is a can cause a little bit of confusion. You may want to ask like a chemist or a pharmacist on your team about it. But active ingredient, ingredient is basis of strength. Means that if you're marketing naproxen sodium and the milligrams that are on your label is of naproxen sodium, then that's ingredient, um, active ingredient, ingredient is basis of strength. If you're doing uh, naproxen sodium as your active ingredient, but the strength is only represented by the naproxen part, not the naproxen sodium part, then the moiety is the basis of the strength. So uh, most drug by USP that is coming out now, moiety is the basis of strength. But a lot of older drugs, you'll have active ingredient, ingredient is basis of strength. So in our case, we're saying naproxen sodium. Choose that, and then the strength we said was going to be 2,000 milligrams. And then the active moiety, the part, the half of the um, active ingredient that's actually exerting the biological effect is in the proxen, so that's the active moiety. Then you save this. Save it. And then you have the ingredient section, and that part is done. 
So this section is the product image. This is if you have a tablet and you want to upload a picture of what the tablet looks like. This is not where the, uh, the carton image goes. So this is just for uh, solid or oral dosage forms, and it's for the picture of the tablet. If you have that, you can upload a file that way. Um, otherwise, you can leave it blank. It's not necessary. Um, then you move on to the characteristics. What does your drug product um, look or taste like? So it's a um, liquid, so we can upload the color. Say it's a blue liquid. Save that characteristic. And a liquid's going to have a flavor. You can add that characteristic as well. And say it tastes like cheese. Save that as well. Okay, so you have your Boo Cheese Wonder Drug, and uh, that's that. If it's a tablet, it's going to require other things like imprint, size, shape, and everything like that. But um, and that's a validation. But for a liquid, these two are enough. And then you're uh, done with that section. You move on to the packaging section. So add package, and here's where you can add the package NDC. Um, so this is the full 10-digit format, and you you decide what kind of, um, or you, you tell us what how it's packaged. So it's in a plastic bottle, and how does it come? So a 100 ml bottle. And this combination drug product type, you just leave that blank if it's not a combination drug product. But say it's a bottle within a box. So if you're doing, if you have a bottle, but then it also comes in a box, then here you would um, put in type zero. It's not a combination product, um, and then you would add the outer packaging associated with it. So in that case, you put the um, package NDC here. Get out there. And the outer is a box. And the quantity, it's just one, one bottle in one box, so one and one. And again, leave this blank. Then um, the marketing status, you can, if you have different package sizes and um, they're all going to start at different times, then you can um, change the start marketing date or and whatnot, and if you're discontinuing certain package sizes, keeping others, you can complete one package size and keep the others active. So it's available uh, at the package level, and you save it here. So there, now you've completed the product uh, package detailing sections here. Save package. Oh, it doesn't like something. Marketing status can only be entered. Oh, okay. So it tells you right up here if something didn't pass validation. So it says marketing status can only be entered at the outermost level of the package. So I took that out. Um, enter a valid package NDC. So I only assigned it a, uh, the, I didn't assign it a package code. So I had to assign it a package code. And NDC must correspond to product NDC. So we all pass. All right. So now you guys are done with the product detail section. All that's completed. And um, like we talked about different packaging, you can just clone a different packaging right here. So say you have a 200 ml, you can, you can clone one so you don't have to, to do everything all over again. And everything comes out similar. You can just change the quantity. And it still comes in one box. And then you save that. Oh, you have to assign it a. And so then now you have two packages associated with your product. So you could just keep cloning however many times as you can, just changing the, um, the details as needed. So now that you're done with the product data elements, you can save this and then move on to the uh, 
the other part of the, um, the product. So here's your Wonder Drug Liquid, and there's the, um, the product NDC. And then again, you can clone this. So say you have a 2,000 milligram strength, and you also have a 4,000 milligram strength. You don't have to re-enter all that. You can clone that product. And it has all the same details, but you'll have to change um, the NDC. Um, if the active, if the marketing start date's different, you change that. If the um, and it has to share the same package information, so all this is likely going to be the same. And then you go into the product, and then you change the strength. And if there's any difference in how you package it or the uh, flavor characteristics, um, then um, you could change that here too. So it starts with characteristics, just go in order. So say maybe the color is different for the um, 4,000 milligram one, it's a green. And then because the NDCs, you have to go into here and update the package NDCs as well. So after you save this, now you have two different strengths in your product. So it just makes it a little bit quicker to do. Um, as long as you're sharing the same um, content of labeling package insert, then you can do this this way. So related documents is if uh, you submitted previous uh, listing data and you want to link this one with that one, you would put the root ID, set ID, and the version number, and it would link it. But otherwise, you leave that blank. And so now you've filled out the STL portion of your listing. So the last part is just updating the content of labeling, the package insert part, and that's up here. And this won't appear until you've saved it as a draft. Um, since I saved it earlier, it's, it's already appearing. So unfortunately, you can't just upload a PDF and uh, be done with it. You have to add it section by section. So STL has specific sections which are um, separated and searchable, so you have to add it section by section. And you add um, the, the, uh, the sections that, as you just follow your package insert or your content, uh, the content of labeling that you're given, and you have to just add it that way. Um, so you add the date, and then this parent section will let you kind of see how it's laying out like a, a an outline format and the title of it you don't need to um, reinvent the wheel just name it the same thing and then um, whatever the um, indication and usage is so um, and in need of wonder take this drug and the highlighted section um, I'll show you in a second here when I save it It'll come up as a box up here. And so when we add the next section, say a dosage and administration, and again, it's uh, 2,000 milligrams daily as necessary. Um, when you save that section, you'll see it, it, it boxes up here. Um, it's just a, a highlight section. You don't need to use that. If you um, don't want a highlighted box section, you could just input the same thing uh, down below in the content and not use that uh, section at all. And um, I delete it. button to click. 
2,000 milligrams daily as necessary, save section. And I have the section under here, but it's not in the highlighted section because I didn't put it in there. So here's where you would also add the JPEG file, the uh, representative sample of your labeling. So you add that section here, and um, this is the icon that you would use to insert an image. So I haven't uploaded any images yet, so I have to do that. So you click on here, upload image. Liquid, that file, upload it. And you can upload all your images at once, or you could do it one at a time. But once it's in there, then that's when you would um, input it here. So this is a um, package image, package label principal display panel. And just choose your file, name it. OK, and then it uploads on there. Once you save your section, then it's uh, uploaded within the contents of labeling. So you just do that one by one, um, and that's how you uh, build a contents of labeling section. Once you're done with that, you can save it as a draft if you're not ready to submit it, or you can submit the SPL, and um, it, it will tell you if. Um, you have any errors that you need to fix before it does. So it says the labeler done should be nine digits long, and I only had eight digits. So once you submit it, you'll get this awaiting acceptance, and um, you'll get either a submission accepted or a submission failed. Um, and once you have a submission failed, it will tell you exactly uh, what you need to fix in order to get the submission through. So it didn't like my product NVC because it's not a valid NVC. C, didn't like my DUNS because it's not a valid uh, DUNS number. The address didn't match, the name didn't match. Um, and so I added several organizations here. Both of them didn't match. And then once you go into the sections as well, so if you go here, then it'll tell you any errors within the different sections that you've had. So um, I cloned this product for the 4,000 milligram section, um, but each product wasn't linked to the establishment, so I have to go back and add, add that, fix it. And that's here in the establishment section. I just have to add the, um, this NVC associated with it. So I, add, I added that. In my previous example, so when you bake a cake, you know, like in the cooking show, then you put it in the oven, then you take out another one. So this is the one I did last night, and I was using India. So. Um, it's not exactly the same. But, so you add that on there. This is, so that's maybe the error that was causing that. All right, so those are, that's the basic gist of product listing, and then um, you guys will have a Q&A session afterwards, so you can ask more um, technical questions here and there. But um, so this is the one I just I just did that's still awaiting acceptance. And I will go back to my oh yeah, this one. Yep. So my presentation to just finish up with you guys. So. Um, so after this, uh, we talked about this, after the submission, you're going to get a message that tells you um, whether it was accepted or denied. And you can keep refreshing the screen, or you can just wait for the email per what Reggie said. Um, and you can know the status of it if you need to fix it or whatnot. Um, so either the email or the message on the screen. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about updating a previous listing. So. Like I said, this is a way, if you only have one product, you don't need to do a listing certification, one or two products, you can just um, send an update to that one or two listings that you have, and that will certify your product annually. So um, basically, in order to do that, you create a new version of your most recently accepted submission. Uh, do not change the set ID. So that set ID stays with that listing throughout the life of that listing. The root ID will automatically generate um, 
and also a new version number will automatically gen uh, generate as well. And you modify all the listing data elements that you need to. If there's any changes or if there's no changes, then all you do is create this new version, submit it, and then you have an updated listing. And then you submit. If you are discontinuing the product, and I want to emphasize that you, um, this is required. The, when you stop manufacturing a drug or, uh, and stop uh, marketing it, you have to notify FDA and let them know that you delisted. Not certifying it um, and letting it expire is not the same thing as delisting it. So if you are no longer making a drug, you have to delist the product with FDA. And it's super easy. I'll, I'll show you guys right now, too. Is you just create a new version of it, keep the same set ID. The root ID will automatically generate. Um, new version number will also automatically generate. And you just change the status from active to complete. And then at, as the the end marketing date field will show up, and you input the expiration date of the last lot in distribution, and then submit, and then that, that's it. So um, I'll just show it to you guys right now. Um, the sample. So OK, this is the one that was accepted. And this is the Wonder Pharma with our um, Wonder Drug. So we want to create a new version. And the um, root ID updated itself. And then the version number updated itself. And then the, the effective date. And then you just go in and change whatever you need to change. So um, say, um, go in here. Say now you just got a, an extra indication for um, for your for your drug nasal. Now you can get wonder through a nasal. You can add that on there and then submit it. Or say you are going to delist it. So if you're going to delist it, then you just change this active to complete. Then you save your product then submit the SPL, and that's it. You've delisted it. Or if there's any updates to the listings, you change what you need to change, and then submit the SPL, and then that updates your listing. Um, and also, we'll certify it for the next calendar year. And go back to. So just to finish up, a couple helpful hints. If you have a Word document or a PDF of your package insert, I would suggest that you copy and paste it into notebook first before you are versus copying and paste it directly onto the um, Cedar Direct. So you'll get some weird um, formatting issues. Like if it's Wonder Drugs mechanism of action, it may come through as like a Wonder Drug question marks mechanism of action. So copy and pasting it into Notepad will um, fix some of those issues. And again, the set ID is the, so the same throughout the life. The root ID, or sometimes you'll hear it uh, referred to as document ID, refers to the version, the different version. And then the submission ID, or sometimes you'll uh, hear it referred to as core ID, is um, refers to each submission. All the failed ones, all the accepted ones. And so if you're trying to get a manual override, this is the, the submission or core ID that you need to submit to our SPL group in order to get that overridden. And it usually starts with this date. So in quick summary, I um, would like you guys to have a, a standard operating procedure to get um, the verification and accuracy in place. So now that listing is an annual process, um, having it in place at least twice a year will make sure that your listings are up to date. And Again, remember to delist when you're uh, no longer in commercial distribution. And um, our Eater List Toolkit has a lot of information with regards to listings and resources. So please take a look at that. And um, listing is important. It allows us to maintain an inventory of all the drugs commercially distributed in the United States and their representative labeling. And lots of organizations use it. So we publish it in the NDC directory so uh, the public sees 
the information you're inputting. So mistakes that you have in your listing is viewable by the public. So Daily Med uses our data and they publish it as well. So um, and then also the data banks and whatnot pull their information for electronic medical records. So and then academia, industry, they all use this data. So in a nutshell, then we need this information to be accurate, complete, and up to date. So um, your help in that is very crucial. And I will actually not be taking questions right now. Uh, we'll do it at the end of Don's presentation. But if you have technical questions that are related to Cedar Direct, um, the email to contact them is cedardirect.fda.hhs.gov. If you have regulatory questions, do I need to list uh, questions about what needs to be included, then that goes to our group email box, which is cedarlist.fda.hhs.gov. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Julian. I hate having to follow a good speaker, but also I guess I'm the only thing between you guys and lunch. So I will go through this. Uh, listing is important. We talked all about uh, why data was, you know, how hard we're working to get the data in. Um, one of the things that we're going to be doing now talking about recertification or certification is verifying that the data is actually correct. So I'm Don Duggan. I'm a team lead uh, with the Durlis staff. And um, I'm going to be going through this. I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, the background and, and who must certify when, where, or, or rather what must be certified and what happens if you don't certify and what it'll look like from Cedar Direct. The other thing is, and everybody's talked about this, but it's really critical that we have accurate data because sometimes we get things, we get notices about contamination and things like that. And we need to be able to follow the drugs, the supply chain all the way back. And we need to know who has it. So that's why this information is really critical for things like recalls and, and things like that. So what companies are supposed to do? They're supposed to keep things up to date and accurate. They're supposed to, like Julian said, check every you know, June and December to make sure that everything is, is updated. And so they, they put in this language in here uh, to make sure that June and December everybody checks, checks their things. Now, um, they, they had said that in the past, they had said if nothing changed, don't bother to report it. So everybody thought we just said, don't bother to report it. They, they didn't hear the first part. So that, we had to do some changes, and we made some changes, and uh, because they weren't, they weren't updating it. You know, they were going ahead and putting it out there. And the problem is we have to consider these active listings. So when we're trying to keep track of all the active listings and all the other companies who are trying to keep track of that and, and the payers and, and everybody else, you know, we're sitting here dealing with, a, you know, we've got lots of data. But some of it's bad. And so our, our goal is really to get a, a quality database in place. And, and, and obviously, you know, the database is right for a second, and then something changes, and, and it's not right. So that's just kind of a constant battle. But one of the things that we've done um, is we've gone ahead and added something new where you have to certify every year. And this is us asking you to check the listings that you know, you did all that work, Julian went through all that you do, and you did all that work, and you got the listing in there. Now you have to let us know once a year that it's okay. And so that's what the certification is for. And um, so any changes that are made, you should send in a label, okay? Because remember, what we're trying to get here is quality data. So you can either certify it to us, say, yes, it's correct, or you can send in a new drug label, which we're going to assume that you've spent some time with and it's correct. Okay? So that's what we're trying to do. Uh, every year, um, you should create a new SPL. Uh, and part of the reason for that, now you can clone these, but uh, I would suggest using a new one because what we do is all those uh, NDC listings that you all are going to verify, 
and say that they're correct, we've also gone through this year and we've validated those. So everything that has been sent in in the past has been validated with up-to-date validations. So things that were sent in the past that, that aren't going to pass, you're going to find out that you're not going to be able to certify an, an unqualified uh, uh, listing. The other thing that the certification is only during the last three months of the year. We like to put everything in the last three months of the year, you know, to go along with your holidays. Well, this is something else. Outside this window, if you want to certify, you're not going to be able to use the certification SPL. You're going to have to send in a, a full listing label. So it's a good idea to get it done. Um, so OK, so this has to do a little bit about serialization. And I'm not going to go into a lot about serialization, but repackagers have to deal with this. And uh, you can contact Drug, Track, and Trace at fda.hhs.gov for questions about serialization. But here's the thing about serialization. If you know you need to do it, so if you know you need to do the serialization with your labels, do not try to certify your labels because you haven't done the serialization. So what you're going to do is if, if you are required to do this, you're going to need to send in new labels, showing the serialization, doing that. And that will take care of your certification requirement for those NDCs. OK, so for people that are required to do serialization, all right? not going to certify those NDCs. You're going to send in a new label with the serialization information on the label. Now, that takes care of your requirement for this year for that NDC, right? Because you can either send in a label or you can, send, you can certify it. But what we're saying right now is we know there's no way you can certify those labels because you haven't done the serialization, OK? So again, you're doing serialization. Got to send in the label this year, OK? So what does our validation include? We're, we're, we're doing all the same things. And this is what happened to all the NDCs that were in our, our database. We, we've gone ahead and we validated them with all the 2017 rules. Obviously, current establishments. Sometimes you're a PLD. And you're getting, and your drug is being made by somebody else. And so if they don't register their establishment, you can't certify that NDC. Because that company, until they register with us, it's, it's not possible. So I'm going to show some examples. And you're going to see where you could come upon. And you'll see where a firm is not, is not registered. So what you'll need to do then, of course, is go in and contact that firm and say, hey, guys, you need to register because I can't do what I need to do until you do what you have to do. So uh, that is something. Um, we're also checking things, just so you know, things like the correct application number. So that could be where if you had an NDC that was a few years ago and maybe you didn't have the right application number on it, or the DEA schedule was incorrect. Okay, Those are the kinds of things that we're, we're checking for. And this is important, too. You know how some people will put more than one product, right? Different strengths on an SPL. All right. So if one of those S, one of those NDCs fails on that SPL, all of the NDCs on that SPL will not be certified or certifiable, uh, so to speak, because the SPL has to be fixed. So what we're trying to do this year is we're trying to make it so can't certify something that shouldn't be certified. OK? So that, that's the big push. OK? So we're going to have everything. The, the goal, of course, is to have everything that's in our database is correct. That's the goal. OK, so what kinds of things? Every active listing on file. OK? So that's finished, unfinished, bulk, API, approved, unapproved, RX. OTC, PLD, contractor listings, medical gases, homeopathic, bulk, uh, repackaged and relabeled listings. Everything uh, that is an active listing has to be done. And let's see. Let's... OK. 
And then certification. Okay, basically, um, any we're trying to make sure that nothing that is incorrect is in our database. So if there is a problem with the listing itself, if there's a problem with uh, the organization, any of the organizations, if there's any problems at all, it's, it's not going to be uh, allowed to be certified. If you have a, a case, if you have a compliance case that's currently being worked on, that can't be certified until that compliance case has, has been satisfied. So what happens if you don't certify it? Well, I'm pretty sure the health the healthcare payers are not going to pay you, okay? Because you're going to either be removed or notated on the NDC directory, and basically that means that they're not you're not going to be able to charge for the drug uh, in the United States, and that's that's a big problem for a lot of people uh, running companies. Um, so they're they're not going to get moved on. They're going to be uh, basically, it's it's like your NDC is frozen, and um, so that we want to definitely avoid. Okay, so just kind of to show you what it looks like, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, do a little demo here because we have made a few changes, and the changes are basically all to keep you from doing the wrong thing. Okay, all right, well, let's see here. Okay, all right. Okay, I I'm, I'm think I'm fine here. Um, okay, so this is where we choose. You go here and uh, check out. You've got your blanket, no changes, and that's under the product listing and recertification. So I'm going to choose my blanket, no changes. And it looks just basically like this. You've got your header details. Generally, we you know we pick same as Cedar direct account details and the authorized agent. Um, you'll get a listing here of your labels. And uh, I'm basically going to show you all this, but this is just to show you how you can add a labeler code. So if you don't get the labeler code that you want, you can add a labeler code. Um, you can also add establishments. Generally, you'll see all your establishments when you, you click on, on uh, refresh the establishments, although if it's confidential, you'll have to add that DUNS in to see the NDCs. Okay. And let's see here. This is what it looks like. You guys are aware of this, all these pending statuses. This is all great. Um, but it won't always look like because sometimes you're going to get, this year especially, you're going to get validation er errors. So kind of going over the, s the status here, if you look at the status, you'll see one says current, the other say validation errors. Okay, so pending means basically it's not certified yet. Obviously certified is, is done. Pending compliance case, there's a compliance case pending and you can't certify it, okay, until you re resolve that. Um, sometimes you, uh, Things are completed. In other words, marketing end date is passed. That can't be certified. Um, current, somebody sent in an SPL, and there is no need to certify this product. Okay. And then finally, validation errors. Th this is where your uh, the, the previously sent in version of your NDC SPL doesn't meet current validation specs. So what that means is you you got a problem. You're going to have to go in and see what that is, what's going on, and the chances are for this type of thing, you may end up having to send in a new um, a, a, a new label. But here's how it works. So I'll go ahead and, and click on that validation error, and what will happen is this little box will come up, validation errors, and it just says this product is not available. You must access the listing SPL. And now right here is your root ID. Okay, so the root ID is there. So if you ever contacted us, you'd be sure to give us that root ID so we would know what you're talking about. And then it's got here the 
the, uh, the rules that are being violated. If the product's regulated by CEDAR, then establish operation listed is linked to at least one listed product except for human compound drugs. Um, so my guess was this was because there was a bad establishment somewhere. It's possible. Um, so I just want to kind of go over this very quickly before I do the demo. Um, every active listing on file, every active listing on file has to be uh, certified. And they can only be certified using the certification SPL October through December. Okay. After that, you can you you can send in full listing labels anytime, and you should if there's a change. Um, products that aren't certified expired, removed, notated. Products that are expired, listed, have a listing deficiency or validation error, can't be certified and they must be updated with a full product listing SPL. And of course, like I said, you're going to want to pay attention to those validation errors because you're going to want to get a head start and try to figure out why, what the problem is with your, your label. Um, and then the serialization. Uh, remember, if you're doing serialization, if you have to do that, then you ha you, you're going to have to change your label. Um, there's no getting around that. You're, it's they're clearly, you know, they're not certifiable as they sit right now. So you're going to have to do that. And once you do change that label, you will not have to certify because you've sent in a label. Okay. So before we get to the questions, I want to, I'm going to try to get to the internet here. Okay. Use my. Sorry. I'm terrible with typing. I don't know how I even got into this field. <laughs> and I understand. Okay. All right. So. Um, what we've done, of course, is we've saved some of the stuff. So these are just drafts that are kind of set up. So looking at this one, this is uh, my draft. Now there's a new new little feature that is kind of nice on on this guy. It says click here to know here to know the certification process. So I click it. Look, it kind of just takes you down, and it says same as Cedar Direct. Select if you're Cedar Direct account detail matches the authorized details. And you add your labeler here. Select all the labelers. We're going to go through this. But just, uh, it's got little help section there. It's kind of fun. OK, so, and show products. All right. We can even delete. So let me just go through this screen here a little bit. Um, OK, so this is all the information. It just pulled it straight from what I had already entered my Cedar Direct account. I've got a labeler code here, and I can go ahead and I've got my establishments. Let me make sure I've got all my establishments. Yes, I do, and it looks like it's good. And I've got my labeler code, so I can go ahead. Let me see the products. I'm going to show the products. It says I've selected one establishment. And these are all my products. Now, these all look pretty good. Okay, now one of them is expired and completed, and you note I can't I can't check that one, but I can check the rest. So the way I would do it is I just go to the top. Yep, go ahead, and it just goes ahead and selects them all. Okay, and at this point I could save, update, and and I could go ahead and send this in, and all of these would then get certified. Now let's look at a slightly different situation. Let's go to this one over here. And again, we're talking blanket changes, certif certification of product listing. Everything's the same. But uh, notice here, I've got an expired uh, place called, Hi oh, it's just the name of a, you know, it's fake or real. But 
the company is, is expired. So here's what I do. If I'm a PLD and I run into this, now it's October, right? So I'm not too worried because I've got till December. But I'm going to get on the phone with my supplier here. And I'm going to call them up and I'm going to ask them when they're going to do their job so I can do my job. Um, because you have to work together here. So they're going to have to, uh, like the contract manufacturer is going to need to, not only they're going to, certainly they're going to have to register, they're also going to have to certify all their products that they make for PLDs and, and, and all the other people. So they're going to have to do all of that. And then, you know, but certainly once, uh, oh, the other thing too is if you have a source code, the source code must be listed, okay? The source code must be listed. If the source code isn't listed, you're going to have a problem and you're not going to be able to certify. Okay? But uh, I would be on the phone with these people this afternoon asking them when this is going to happen. And I apologize to Jay Curry if he's watching. It's just a made up name, I hope. Um, but so, so here's what you would do you would wait. I would wait on this and I would say, hey, get your stuff together. Then I would come back. Now let's say that uh, you decided that uh, this company, not only they expired, but they were a terrible service and you never want to deal with them again. You know, they're done. You're, you're like, good, I'm glad you're expired. I don't have your products anymore anyway. At this point, I could go in and just delete that. And I would delete that establishment. And now I only have Baxter left. So I'm going to say, go ahead and show me all these products. And I've got three products. So at this point, I could say, OK, yeah, let's go ahead. We're going to certify those. And then I can, I can save it, and then I can certify it, and I can uh, submit it. Um, so that is, that is basically what is going on regarding certification. Again, this year, they're, they're trying to make it a little bit easier so you don't end up certifying things. Uh, that uh, you know shouldn't be or need to be fixed first. So it give you a little bit of upfront information about uh, what's going on. So for example, like I said, if you if you see problems, you try to fix. I, I would try to fix it myself because I don't. I never like to wait for anyone to answer an email. I just want to know and go. But um, certainly we're available at Eduralis. So be sure though. If you have a question about something like this, be sure to add in the ID, that root ID that, that we, we showed, and then the rules that are um, being violated. That will help us solve the problem, and it may help you too. Some of you guys I know quite a bit about doing this. So, uh, but, but anyway, that, that is it, I guess, in a nutshell. Is there, are there any questions that people may have about uh, anything? Before you share that, uh, the panel to come back up and join us um, so that you don't have to take them all alone. Uh, I know we've got a lot of online questions. We've basically broken the online pod where you put in questions. Uh, so uh, here in the room, if you've jotted down the questions you have, please feel free to line up at the microphones. But let's go ahead and... Uh, Start with an online question, please. Before we get started with the online questions, a, a bit of an announcement. Um, we are experiencing a big delay in validation times. There's been a, an onslaught of submissions, uh, particularly with the blanket, no sort of, no, <laughs> no uh, blanket certification SPLs. Um, so our advertised times up here right now, um, they're a little bit longer, and we have a, a really large backlog right now. Uh, it's great to see so many eager beavers out there trying to get all their stuff taken care of at the beginning of the registration re-registration cycle. But uh, right now, um, it looks like it's as much as uh, a 24-hour wait to find out whether your file validated. There's a couple of very large files in there. Um, it's chunking through. Our, I've been informed that our the, the IT folks, they're working on it. They're trying to make it a little more efficient and stuff. So just so you know, for those online uh, and those in the room, if you try to submit, um, normally it doesn't take that long. But for right now, there, there was just such a, a big bandwidth uh, uh, 
this set of submissions that things have slowed down a bit. But once this initial spike, and we always see an initial spike of traffic in the beginning of October, it'll level off, and then we get all the procrastinators at the end of December. <laughs> December. So, uh, thank you, and, and please be patient. Distribution for all of you. That yeah, yeah, that's a that. that's a little plug too to get your stuff in early. Um, go ahead, please. Yeah, let's person. have the first question in the room, nice and close to the mic, please. Um, you had said that if you do make an update to a listing, that it essentially certifies or recertifies for the next year, like a council certification. So just for timing, like if you make that update, say in June 2018, does that still certify for all of 2019? Yes, it does. Okay. Yep. Um, and then I have just a couple other questions. I'm so sorry. Um, so the SPLs that people submit for their listings, that's essentially what Daily Med pulls from, right, in order to um, populate their website. So now that the inactive ingredients are required um, in your listing, does that automatically get posted in Daily Med, or is that something that um, the firm can decide whether or not they want to have display? Um, yes, it's required to include the inactive in ingredient information now in drug listing, but you can mark it as confidential. So if you do that, then it does not get published anywhere online. Okay. Um, and then just one other question. When you're submitting your first, when you're um, making your, like, a new listing, how long would you say that it would take to make a new listing? Like, it, it just... I've never done it, and it seems a little bit time-consuming. So just to sort of have an idea. Of... Oh yeah, I mean, it, I did a live demo, probably, um, but I didn't do every field. So especially with the content of labeling, I would say about an hour, okay. hour and a half, depending on how complicated the product insert is. The SPL portion is not that bad, but it's the it's content. The of labeling content. That can be. Thank you. Right. All right, and if there's other questions in the room, come on up to the microphone. And I see we have somebody coming up right now, so we'll go ahead and take that question. Hey, so I know you mentioned for SBLs that the package um, labeling has to be the same for all of them. But what about the principal display panel? So say, for instance, you have like a limited edition bottle and it has a dog on it. And then you have another one that's a cat on it. It's like the same uh, strength and product. Can you put multiple principal display panels in a single SBL? Yes, you can put multiple principal display panels in one SPL. I, I would add to that that the regulatory requirement is a representative sample of labeling, um, but we highly recommend every version of your label, if you can, to include that the, uh, the SPL file does accept multiple JPEGs. Any other in-person one questions for now? If not, I'll move to can the... I, oh, please. Can I just, just yeah, go want ahead, to mention go. one thing? I don't know if anybody has one of these. It's a cell phone, but um, I just went ahead today, just today, and I went to our website, uh, our instructional website, and I downloaded the electronic drug registration and listing uh, toolkit. So what I would suggest everybody do is go ahead, go out there, download it to your phone so you'll never be without it. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm never without it now. And the other thing is there is also an FDA NDC mobile app that's available out there that you could check out, too, at your convenience. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, nice yeah. and close to the microphone for me, please. Sure. Uh, so I have a question regarding listing for repackers. Um, specifically, what are the differences than what you went through earlier, um, specifically such as like source NDCs where you have to list for the source manufacturer and the content of labeling as well? And I'm going to add on to that. Also, what about uh, repackers that do kidding? Uh, I know that adds another level of complexity. So I don't know if you have any uh, input or advice on that as well. Yeah, we, we, we try to avoid kits as much as we can. Uh, no, but, but kits um, are subject to the same, re um, same regulatory requirements as any other products. So, um, um, a kit manufacturer basically is, um, if you will, a repackager that is taking two different products, packaging it in one unit, and, and sending the information in. So the requirement for listing and certification remains the same. Um, it, it is get certified as, as 
as far as I understand, at the product level, at the main NDC product level. And so you don't need to worry about the parts, um, but um, their NDC reservation is a little bit more complicated and it's work in progress right now. So as a uh, pit manufacturer, just want to clarify the marketing category for that. So unless your kit was, um, the whole kit was um, sent to FDA and reviewed and, uh, and there's an application, then it's an unapproved drug product. So um, some, list, some people listing are putting um, the NDA or ANDA of parts for the whole kit. That's not um, correct. You have to yeah, sure thanks, thanks Julian, for, for um, talking about that. Please, 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 you're, if you're repackaging or, or you're putting into a kit a product like, for example, naproxen, as, as Julian um, did the drug listing for, and a medical food, for example, your, your end product is not naproxen. So do not use the application number for naproxen to list or market your product in the U.S. That will cause a lot of problems later down the road. Your, your listing SBL might get uh, accepted, but it doesn't mean that your submission is correct. So pay attention, please. And to continue to answer your question for uh, kits, a, a kit you can also think of as a listing made up of other listings. So uh, if there are NDCs already assigned to the components of your kit, you may, the SPL, we, you, you need to include those in the SPL as you build that kit of submission. Um, and yeah, you just answered the, ND, the NDA number for that, so thank you. Um, oh, and then also the uh, repacker, you mentioned the source NDC. That source NDC must be a valid and actively listed NDC also. So, uh, and, and it needs to be in the 10-digit 10, 10 standard FDA format, not the 11-digit version that's out there. So uh, just some reminders and some tips. Can you want to say something first before yeah, I move just, to the just next question? Yeah, just wanted to add, basically, if you um, were repackaging from a product, um, you know, let's say the previous year, and that product, for whatever reason, is not marketed anymore, you can't really um, um, submit a certification for a repackaged drug from that source NDC, which is not in the market anymore. So your certification will fail validation. So make sure... You know, maybe maybe you know it's the same active ingredient and it's the same and um, the same strength of active ingredient, but it's a different product. It's a different NDC. Change your source NDC and update your listing, and then it takes care of your certification for the following year. Moving on, can someone can or multiple people on the panel there address uh, NDC assignments for packaging levels, nested packages, and what we require? and expect to see and um, yeah so does somebody want to tackle that or do you want me to tackle that you go ahead <laughs> <laughs> thanks I'll step up here um, so it differs a little by center um, but uh, for nested package levels when you have say blister pack within a carton within a box or I'm sorry I got to keep this up to my mouth or a bottle, and then you have like a six pack or a four pack of bottles within a case or something like that. Um, Cedar's policy is that if the inner packages or that innermost package, maybe a, a this saleable unit or the dis, you know the minimum dispensing unit, if that's not also marketed separately and and on its own, it's not required to have an NDC. If it does it it has to be a unique we recommend it have it have one but it has to be unique so the the individual blister pack has to be different from the carton of blister packs or bl the blister pack and and the the one pack bottle of product or the one bottle of product has to have a different ndc code at the package level that third segment to the four pack or the 12 pack or the case of bottles and and that, by extension, continues up to however many nested levels you have. So certainly the outermost level, whatever is actually being shipped or sold or marketed, that, ha that outermost level has to, and topmost level has to have a, a, an NDC package code. 
but anything underneath, if you are going to assign it, it has to be, it has to differ at the package level. You look like you want to add to that. Um, yeah, I just wanted to also add that um, I think I think from what I understand, CBER also enforces. So there isn't. Yes. It is in in the regulations. If your package size or type changes, um, the NDC assigned to that level must change. So if you have even one vial that is in a carton, you have to um, assign different. Um, NDC package codes to it. As Paul mentioned, you don't have to necessarily print it on the vial or on the carton, um, or even on the carton. It's it's um, under 201. It's not required to have the NDC. But um, when you do, um, the NDC package levels, when you're listing the product, has to be a different um, package code. Um, again, like Paul mentioned, Cedar is not necessarily enforcing it as much as, uh, from what I heard, Cedar does. Um, but um, it is actually in the regulations, and it's very clear that um, I think the preamble it even brings up um, some examples um, that you need to change your package code if your package size or type changes. Okay, we've got about three minutes left. Come on up. All right. I'll do a very quick question. Uh -huh. So. By now, you guys mentioned about a couple of uh, steps, like uh, in terms of the reservation listing, but all those are based on each uh, different account. So I, w I just wondering, is there any way or potential choice for people to combine or trans transfer data from each different um, account? Um, like, yeah. what do you mean? Like you you have an account that you see? To yeah, to combine the different, like uh, for example, you have a. Uh, Different account uh, data for uh, listing or registration or NDC reservation. So you try to combine all of data into the, the same account. account. So I just I, wonder, is there any possibility to do that? I would say, from from back here, I would simply recommend um, the easiest. Well, perhaps not the easiest. We have no mass copy uh, function, but you can download any accepted SPL file. So the best way to do it on your own would be to download those files your hard drive or network or whatever and then go into the preferred account that you want to combine everything and then upload them back in. Um, with the little time we have left, I have a quite an important question for certification. Don, you can field this if you want. If not, you can kick it back Go to back me to or you, someone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> essentially, I'll, I'll paraphrase the question here. Um, someone was asking specifically about certifying a product or uh, using the blanket, no changes, uh, certification file, you know, for many, many products, but they are a contract manufacturer and a lot of those products, they are no longer involved in the manufacture of how uh, the question, and, and I would add to this and, and paraphrase this question in this uh, respect, when, when you're in Cedar Direct or whatever tool you're using and you have that long list of all the NDCs associated with your company, um, how, how do you, first of all, not certify, how do you take those off your list, or uh, better yet, um, what should you do about products that are, you know, or have incorrect information? Can you, I know you mentioned it, you talked about it already. You, but. You, you can selectively check. I, I went ahead and checked them all because you know, you've got a lot and you want to get it done, you check them all. But you can also, if you look through that NDC list and you see some of those NDCs that you know, I'm no, we're no longer associated with, we should not be certifying them. You simply don't put a check by them. So may, maybe the idea is you, you've got a list of 100 and there's three that you don't want to check or you know, you, you know you would check them all and then uncheck the ones uh, that, uh, that you don't want to certify. So that's all you have to do. If you, if you put a check by it, it's going to attempt to certify that. If you leave it unchecked, it will not attempt to certify that NDC. And as the sequel to that or the follow-up, I would say if, if as a contract manufacturer you see that your facility or your company is still associated with yeah. products that yeah, you are not associated, contact the companies and tell them their listing is, is no longer up to date and, and that you are you know, shouldn't be mentioned or identified as a manufacturing establishment. Yeah. That can help us with our compliance by pointing out to the other companies, to the PLDs and perhaps other registered manufacturers that, hey, this listing needs to be updated. That, that, that said, if you see NDCs that you are in 
involved in manufacturing, but you have ceased manufacturing, then you should delist those. <laughs> Don't certify them, but delist them. Uh, for those of you online, again, if you had 